Hey guys, Devin with Sip Saver Celebrate, and you know my co-host Chris. How you doing? And we have guests. <laughs> we always love collaborating with everybody, as you know, and they invited us on a collaboration of theirs. So we thought we would extend the hand and uh, let's do it again. Um, and we had a different tequila in mind, but he's that? like, oh, sorry. Well, yeah, I just keep going, having a good time. <laughs> Uh, Meg Ryan, uh, go ahead, let us know who you are and let the audience know what it is that brings you to. I'm Morgan. I'm Ryan. And we're a guy, girl on a trail. And uh, I mean, we just, we fell in love with tequila and it was a, a slippery slope that we've been loving. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we throw tequila into everything we do because it makes life better. Yes, and it's a great tax write-up. I mean, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. What, what? You know what? I I was always intrigued by your name as well. A guy, a girl, and a trail. So, what brought you to your name? I I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. That, that, yeah, I mean, it's a guy, with... a girl, and we love being on trails. Yeah. That's... I was gonna say, yeah. There's it... Jeep is always seems to be the forepoint of like. Most of your pictures, and you're usually on a two track somewhere. So I'm like, hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, you know, it's like just that idea of always being adventuring, always being out there exploring new things. And I mean, there's a real connection for us with, you know, getting out there and physically getting on a trail and exploring and seeing new places, meeting new people, but at the same time, that idea of tequila, it weaves in for us so well. And it's it usually really on the trail that. with us. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that comes out. Yeah. yeah. And we're the same way. Yeah, yeah we're we just, best friends. Yeah, we just came back from Hawaii. And and trust us, everywhere we went seemed to end with a trail of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of like, here. here's the agave spirit. Like, you sent us an agave spirit. These people are on the Maui. And they've got some amazing um, agave spirits. I ended up buying all five of their, uh, well, they have six, but oh, I went the high proof and above. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. Well, today you would have said, let's go ahead and crack open the Widow Jane and Yeho. Um, I just threw this bottle up here just because we did have the review of the Widow Jane, um, the Reposado. And I was mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, like, Towards the end, I kind of wanted to give it a little taste, see what the difference was a little bit as sure. well. Um, but not necessarily, obviously, for you folks if you don't want to. Um, but let's talk about this one. As we crack it open, you want to go ahead and pour us all up? So this is by Tequila Ocho, and they are out of the highlands there in in Jalisco. Um, 1474. The, uh, those guys are, are amazing all about family, their plantation, absolutely stunning and beautiful. So if you're watching this and get a chance to go, make sure you tell them, Sip, Saver, <laughs> Celebrate, sent you, and, you know, a guy, a girl on a trail. Um, they they really do treat you like family. It is invitation only, so um, you do have to kind of know that stuff. So let's talk about on Tequila Matchmaker. This is actually a high-proof Inejo. This one is uh, 96 proof or 48% alcohol by volume. It is single estate, like almost everything that Tequila Ocho does, is they do single estate just from one farm. Um, it's wood fermentation tanks, 100% agave, open air fermentation, and without the fibers. Their stills are copper, and they uh, distill it twice. They're using used, obviously, Widow Jane, Barrels, which is bourbon. Yep, and uh, they use a roller mill to crush it. They cook it with stone brick ovens, and of course, it is um, certified as no additives. Boy, I can smell that. I haven't even had it near me. It's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> you can get that bourbon from a from a little bit of a way. What are you folks getting? Yeah, yeah. It's. Um, I mean right away on the nose you know it's tequila but there there are hints there of where you know where it came from and what it was hanging out with right it's like 
Yeah. I'm, I definitely come from, uh, I guess I would say more wine and whiskey is like where I came into tequila, you know? And so for me, initially, these were the kinds of notes that I was really always going to seek out more of anything that was more aged, of course, right? Is going to be a little bit more of a nod to that whiskey world in general. Right. But then when you do something like this and you actually use, you know, use spent barrels that have whiskey in them, then it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> How can I not love this? <laughs> Which, well, I do that, but she doesn't like the repo. The, the widow. Okay, yeah. repo. okay. no, fair. Like that's, that's why one I want my all time favorites. I felt like the repo, if I remember right, I thought the repo was a little bit harsh. Yes. I mean, and that was my, yeah, I completely agree with you. So that that's one thing I'm interested to see with this. I remember with the repo, opening yeah. and trying it and really liking it. But a week later, it was amazing how much it changed as it as yeah. it had a chance to breathe. And it, it was does. night and day difference. It went from good to phenomenal. So <laughs> I'm interested to see if this is going to do the same thing. Yeah. And I hope I don't, you know, like uh, do any sort of brainwashing here or suggestions that end up affecting things. But for me, the repo was very acetone and I couldn't ever move past it. Okay. Yes. Now I had that same Hi. I had that same reaction with the uh Nuevo Uno. Uh Nuevo Uno, as soon as you just crack it first crack, everything is like a solvent or acetone. It's got that weird chemical smell to it. Yeah. But then after a week or two, like Ryan was talking about, after a week or two, um it's been open, it changes completely and it mellows right out. Because it, it's actually a great spirit, but it's not a great spirit off the first crack. That's what I would have to say. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk about the, uh, let's talk about what we're getting on the nose. Yeah, and I do want to ask you guys, so it looks like your bottle was already open. Did you have you? Oh, no, no, we we just took the plastic off. You, only the plastic, okay. Yes, yep. Yep. Yeah, I just took it off just because it's a little bit easier sometimes than trying to fumble <laughs> it on yeah. camera. So, so yeah, no, the first twist the was breaking the, <laughs> the actual sealed label. Yep. So both of us are doing, you know, neck pour, first time open entirely. Yeah. Yep. Yes, totally never opened this bottle yeah. at all. Just taking the plastic off just before camera. Yeah, smart. You guys have done this before. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. This is my first day. We just, <laughs> I was just looking this today while we were at lunch. Um, we had, I know it's breakfast there, but <laughs> it's lunch here. <laughs> we just uh, looked at our, we've got 542 videos up right now. So, wow. you know. <laughs> Love we, it. We just started a year ago. <laughs> 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 okay. So, so it's kind of interesting. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of tears or legs that kind of stick around. They, you know, they quote and then they're kind of gone after a little bit. Yeah. Um, but the colors are very unique. So, you know, Ana Maria always said to make sure you check the colors. And for this being an Anejo, I would think it would be less silvers and whites to more of those barrel notes and those yellows. Mm -hmm. Um I've which seen more which is very yellows and greens, which is very unique. Are you holding it over white? Yeah, the out there white. <laughs> I mean, in general, it seems like the the color of age stuff is really dependent on the char level of the barrel. Correct. And how Correct. many times it's been used? If it's a fresh right. char first use, you're going to get a ton of color. Right. right. And Maybe then you have to also... use you know three times on a level two char. It's going to be pretty light. And I feel like Ocho in general tends to be very light in color yeah. on their age stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree. I do actually see a little of that green tinge that you're talking about too. Yeah. I, yeah. I you know, it's kind of like if you take a white wine, going back to your right. wine references, yeah. you take a white white wine, you set it to the side. So like the, the greener it is on a wine, the younger the wine is. Um, obviously I, I get a little bit of that, but it's still, it's beautiful, crystal clear. I'm getting more legs than you are because I'm looking at your glass and mine. Mine yeah. is right, but they break really quick and then they're gone. Hmm. 
Yeah. What are, we, what no, are you guys yeah. putting on the nose? Let's talk about the nose, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'm noticing a lot. I would say that initial hit for me, there's a lot of vanilla there. But if I dig a little deeper, then I'm getting actually, for me personally, some stone fruit, like plum almost. Um, and then there's something just subtly herbal for me. Mm -hmm. So on the, uh, on the 12 o'clock, moving to the 2 o'clock, I get like flowers flowery and almost stone fruit um on that when i get to the tw uh, six o'clock i get your um i get your herbalness a little bit of vegetal but it's more like a sweetness to there I, i'm not sure yeah yeah but like uh the, the reason i say more herbal and less vegetal is there's something with a bit of like uh, not spice like pepper, but spice like you might get from some, some, you know, some like from clothes, herbs. like clove, yeah. you know, yeah, I yeah. cinnamon almost immediately. You call on the clove, yeah. Cinnamon, cinnamon almost mm. immediately. I don't get the yeah. cinnamon in this one. I can, uh, I can I see get... the cinnamon. I mean, yeah, now cinnamon. that you mention it, I, I can, yeah. <laughs> I can pick up on some cinnamon. And, and maybe it is in general, it's that sort of like, that mix of baking spice where you're no yeah. you, you yeah, 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 yeah. a little ginger, a little clove, a little cinnamon, you know, and it's all kind of now on the nine o'clock I get citrus and mint. Nice call on that mint. <laughs> That's, That's really subtle, that. but I do pick that up. This is why I, I enjoy tasting things with Morgan. Like she's <laughs> Well, yeah, known in a sense for, for how good her palate is. And, right. I mean, I'm I'm very much like I love it or I don't. <laughs> when she starts it. calling out these things, it's like that's when when you can start to pick up on some of them, and it, it's well, and that's why I like tasting with other people in general. Yeah. I, just, I love the I love the back and forth. I love the conversation that happens around tasting. It's, it's I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> That four thirty is like a nice peach, though. <laughs> That's more the stone fruit, yeah. Yeah. Um, I get her stone fruit over at six. But I don't but get I, at that four thirty. I get a nice sweet peach to me. Okay. See, your peach is more my uh closer, not one hundred percent, but closer to like an apricot or a nectarine, but not that sweet and not that prominent, but more closer to the apricot. Yeah, see, and I just keep pulling out plum. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. And, no, and, that's a good one. And more like that 6, 30, 7 o'clock, I'm right there with you. I'll give you a plum <laughs> on that. So I, I've got the peach at 4.30. I got the plum at that 6, 30, 7 o'clock. Like, yeah. it, it's mind-blowing that it's all right here in my hand. But right, I, yeah. I, I, right. And that's what I love about when you go around the clock and you get such different uh aromas that you just would never even like what yeah How is that possible right. but it's yeah but, you <laughs> know, for me the 11 o'clock is alcohol and, and that's normal right normally that's you know that's your lightest like yeah. compound and in terms of actual you know chemical composition that right. Right. tends to float to the top which you know that's the whole goal of tipping sideways giving it away to you just sip, yeah. snip straight up. All you're getting is that alcohol. But you yes. know, sideways, kind of start at the top, work your way down. It just gets better and better as you get lower in the glass. Absolutely. And, you know, I think we're we're kind of hitting on this like very good argument for why your glass matters. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. We've talked so, about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've talked about the riddle glasses. We've talked about wine glasses. We've we um, love the agave. Um, yeah, the agave, agave glass. Yes, yeah, the agave, agave, agave glasses from uh, Amazon. Purpose. You know, what are they, Mr. Nice or whatever? Yeah, something so like that. These, these are the ones we, buy. like, this is the, the box, another one just yes. from Amazon. And these yep. things are great. It's yep. amazing how durable they are, too. We take these ones camping because they're basically... I'm so afraid of that. <laughs> we, we travel all over with these glasses, though. And these I mean, we've lost sturdy. a couple, but, you know, nothing too crazy. True story. Um, and, and we have gone back and forth. We even did an episode where we put the same spirit in every one. Mm -hmm. And for 
us personally, we like that it kind of concentrates it and then blooms it into your nose so yeah. you can find everything. Where yeah. um, the wine glass, you kind of lose some. The Glencairn is a great glass as well, especially starting out. They're cheap. But, you know, for us, we seem that we lost the nose on it when we compared all the glasses. So right. that's why we use the Agave Spirit right. glass. And yeah. everybody is different. I've seen that, like, uh, if you go to the um, Curiosity Public, I love watching their stuff. They are all riddle glass only. And they say that's theirs. And I see this is what you have. Um, and I think it's a great, great tool as well. You know, those and the uh, Glen Karen seem to have the same shape and same yeah. nose. Yeah, we yeah, use similar. we use the Glen Karens. We have basically twelve black glass Glen Karens, and that's for doing blinds with anything aged. Yes, and it's like if you can make out the color, it's like that. It's a giveaway, you know. And and that's yeah. true. That's true. Well, let's go in for the taste. What else? Salute. Right. Salute. Yeah. <laughs> Good noise. <laughs> mm. I don't like that initial taste. What? You know, the very first thing that hit me, if I may, <laughs> is this sort of like brine. I'm getting I, like an olive brine almost. Even though we're not supposed to talk about the first drink. I was going to say, I don't even, not even <laughs> I don't even factor it in. The first one the was, was black licorice to me. It was like, open up a piece of black licorice, pop it in your mouth. That's what it was to me. I think it is like uh, that really <laughs> black, dark cigar that I like that you hate. It's like I ripped it open and I took a big bite of it. I'm like, ooh, no. <laughs> All right, so, so let's go for the real one. So let's try it again. I just did the real one, and that is great. I like it. I'm surprised you still get that much heat. I mean, I know it's a higher proof, but generally it mellows out with aging it in a barrel. Um, there's still some heat on there, but man, that's that's delicious. Well, I wasn't. I must have short poured mine. Now that's much better. That was my first drink, by the way, for the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Me too, but you know, it's like I didn't even brush my teeth this morning all that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you get the mint from your <laughs> brushing. <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding, but yeah, it's <laughs> early. It's earlier. <laughs> so now I'm getting first. I get some barrel spices right off the first yeah. initial palate. There, it's like the first thing I taste is is bourbon and caramel on the front end. I was gonna say you I definitely get that bourbon or like that uh like brown sugar bacon. Okay. Yeah. I get the sweetness, the caramels, the vanillas. I get beautiful baking spices that are all mixed together. Like you're gonna make a spice cake, you get that clove, you get the little bit of cinnamon, you get that little bit of um um just just that kind of palate. Um and that comes from that bourbon, but then as it settles in, it has a wonderful effervescence to me. And I think that's the higher um, higher proof that's kind of blooming out in your mouth. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Like, I it, like it. it doesn't, I totally agree. It doesn't come across like a really hot, high proof would. It comes across as like brightness. Right. It gives yeah. you a little tingle in the mouth. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's that effervescent thing you're talking about. I think that's a good descriptor for it because it's like, it doesn't express like some high proofs would. It expresses as just like brightness that kind of tingles. Yes. Um, uh, I'm I'm also still, I still get that brine, olive brine and black licorice thing. I still get that um, pretty prominently, I would say. I agree that there's also, you know, there's, there's richer things pulling in here. But I'm still really like prominently noticing olive brine and black licorice. I really like I, I that, that exhale after the swallow, where it's just like like caramelized agave is is the best way I could think to describe that. That's I love that. That's really good. I like it. It's got a lot of it, boy. It's got a lot of that. 
bourbon influence, I think. Mm -hmm. That was, you know what? It almost makes me feel um, not exactly the same um, palette content, but pretty dang close is it gives me a lot of uh, Tears of Lorona. I can see that. Spicy bourbon, um, cognac, that 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 side of things. Um, the agave is not lost. Number one, I want to make sure I know that. I want to tell mm -hmm. everybody that. Look, the agave. <laughs> yeah, it's agave. Yeah, <laughs> it's agave. But you're getting such a beautiful bourbon that you would love to just have a great evening, maybe a cigar, watch a movie, or just chill out waterside. You know what I mean? That's that's what I'm feeling from this. So yeah. I do think the the anejo is completely lost out of it though. Um, I think the Widow Jane completely overpowers everything. So you do lose those those flavors of Ocho and what they are known for. That's what I had to go back and refresh myself with. That's why I pulled out the Anejo is because I do think that is almost completely lost in this bottle. Um, I do think it is great because you do get those bourbon influences and those re you know really dip. Uh, let's try that again those really rich and deep flavors. Mm. But I do think that the Anejo does get lost. Um, and I mean, when when we were traveling, we found this amazing little bar, you know, that they had the Blanco with Ocho. And I guess I forgot how good the Blanco actually was. Yeah. <laughs> and so now oh. that we're coming back to one of his spirits, I'm kind of like, huh where to go and so yeah that's that's so, what i'm looking for here so you you just poured the añejo there what what can you say about that comparison now side by side so i thought the añejo um a has a nice light um agave presence to it the the barrel is very subtle um so you get the best of really what ocho does um, with that really super light oak to it that just is super smooth and full of a little bit of sweetness, some caramels, um, a little bit of cream. That's where I'm going to add to it because I'm going to say if, you're, um, if your palate is super leaning towards a bourbons, whiskeys, and stuff like that, Widow Jane is your, is your deal. Because, yes, you get agave, but, yes, he is correct. You get way more of that bourbon essence from here. This one, as I just took a nice um, smell and a taste, this is sweet. This is correct. This is like a sweet, beautiful tequila that's been aged in a barrel, and now you're getting some cream, some vanillas. You're, you're getting sweet tequila savory and spice definitely spicy this is very spicy but i like it so like i know and i, I got a, com it, a comment on our our our, our little yeah thing. i was gonna address that in another episode so but okay they want us to go ahead and start giving ratings i i'm not down on that i kind of not down that. on that so i am so we always <laughs> either do a pass or a fail um, and that has kind of been our system because then we kind of leave it to our viewers as to what they think. I don't want to really... We'll join you with the Neho quick. Please, yes, please, please do. <laughs> I don't think See. I want to influence our viewers that drastically because I still want yeah. you to have an opinion. Yeah. You know, just yeah. like, just like you know, when you sent us your sample, hey, this is, you know, a tequila product. And, and it's a Blanco that's made properly. I went yeah. down a whole nother line compared to everybody else. Oh, no, you did tell me, and that's why it's you awesome. You tell me that there was a handful of people that were like me, but more people were on your guys' side. Sure. Yeah. We still have just like this little eeny beeny bit. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, made a, I made it so we didn't drink it all so that when we found it out, we could go back and, and you know, taste it again because you know, that's the fun part of it is if you do it all in one, then you don't have something to come back to when, you know, your blind is revealed. Do you want to try a little? Yeah, that's, look, at, I mean, just the color difference between. Huge difference. Is like very massive. used girls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
just a little smell. No, I, you know, tasting this on Yeo now, it's like, God, they're really different. Exactly. Different. That's, and that, I, and that's I why that. I had to go look at it. Yeah. <laughs> It just happens to be right there. <laughs> <laughs> we have all of we have all of the Ochos. Well, not all of them, but I would love to get my hands on that Transatlantic one. I'd like to oh. get the oh yeah, or the eight, uh, eight. Yeah, the eight eight eight. Eight eight eight. Yeah, the eight eight eight. I'd love to get my hands on that. <laughs> I mean, there's only so much we can do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna now. I'm checking out the the repo again. But tell us about what you guys are getting from comparing the Widow Ocho in Yeho to the uh, the regular Ocho um, in Yeho, like side by side. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you wouldn't think it was the same brand. No, they're it's... really different. <laughs> The right. nose for me on the the añejo is um, initially a lot of mineral, a lot of things that you might pick up on a, um, a like a blanco almost. It's it's really to me fresh compared to there. Yes. a like a lot of añejos, and also just compared to the widow Jane, it's very fresh, very mineral, minty, like, and yeah, yeah, fresh, minty, and citrus. That's where I which, would put that one. Which year is your Anejo? 21? Yep, 2021. This is La La Vera La, Ver, La Dira. La Dira. Okay, we have a, a 2019 here. Oh, so then it would be even different than ours. Sure. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's one of my favorite things about Ocho is like they take terroir and put it into tequila, yeah. you know, a single estate agave. So it's yeah, every time it's a different name on it, it's right. it's different. And that's awesome. I've got so like the triangle going on. <laughs> I do I do pick up on a lot of florals on this on Yeho as well. Just again, just on the nose. Um real Ooh. florals. Like you know when you're when you're taking like have you guys ever done this with like a lilac? You take you take a a blossom off of a lilac and you you like suck the nectar out out of it. Have you ever tried that? <laughs> That's a thing. That's a thing. Or like or like. <laughs> I, I got I got. got let me start. Mine's got flowers on it. <laughs> but I'm getting that. But where you're like a real sweet, where you can taste the sweetness of the nectar of the flower. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. Well, I just wanted to tap into the to the repo. Again, and compared to the Añejo, kind of like yeah, yeah, single out between these two, I'm still more of a fan of the Añejo than the Repo. The Repo is it 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 is pretty still stringent. It's very stringent. Um, in comparison, um, you get the same essence, but more of a stringent um a taste and nose than the Añejo. I think the Añejo beautifully rounded itself out after a while i think yeah well yeah honestly i was because of my experience with the repo and how it just like it never came around for me even after it'd been open for a while it never came around into something that i cared for it stayed really cutting and harsh for me i was nervous we'll throw that one in as well i, I was nervous <laughs> doing the doing the you know the widow jane um on Yeho, I was really like this we're doing the neck pour we're opening for the first time this is gonna not go well and I still like it though it was great like yeah right off the bat I I already like it so much better than the yeah, preference wise I'm gonna lean more than that to this one now if I'm still gonna talk about the repo I'm still gonna rate it way higher than the bar garbage that we usually see <laughs> absolutely so <laughs> So I definitely think that from the Repo de the Anejo, you can tell that it's Widow Jane. You can tell that it's the same yeah. creator. You can tell that, you know, they're using all of the same processes. One is just age longer, which does give it that buttery silkiness on the back for the Anejo. However, I'm kind of liking the Repo because it gives me more on the palate. You know, it gives me more to talk about. You know, you've got the peppers, you've got the white pepper, you got the spice of like 
you know, some chili, you've got the beautiful mint, you've got the, you know, the wonderful citrus in it. So, I mean, it is very, very complex. And I like that they all speak individually. Yeah. Well, I can see you personally saying that because you tend to uh, to steer closer to those whiskey flared tequilas. Those are those are your particular round. And I don't and I don't disagree. But that's and you why throw we your bring... little peppered uh, cigar right in it, and that's that's right. him. And yeah. that's why you know we talk about the bourbons and whiskeys we do because you know that's kind of where I go from. Yeah, you know it's funny like. It sounds like you're more like Ryan, <laughs> but what's weird, I'm the one, Ryan doesn't like whiskey. I'm the one who likes whiskey, but it's almost like when I'm drinking tequila, I have a completely different set of okay criteria of what I'm after than when I'm drinking whiskey or bourbon. So for me, when I'm drinking a tequila, I'm after something that comes across as very floral, very elegant, very refined. And Ryan's like, no, give me the punch in the face. <laughs> give me the spicy pepper, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's just one of those things that, you know, it's like, this is that whole conversation that I love. It's like, you like what you like. It's yeah. really fun to just talk through like, you know, yeah, was, like this, this was completely organic. I enjoy this. <laughs> hey, did you just pull out the actual Widow Jane there? Yeah, we pulled out a Widow Jane tenure to, to okay. throw it in well. <laughs> we we, we got it back here, and we're going to do the review here a little bit later. <laughs> like, like, you, so revisiting this repo, I love that. That is so sweet. That is that is fantastic. That reminds me why that, <laughs> that's my favorite Reposado. That is so good. Oh, I don't know if I would push it as favorite not reposado, but <laughs> I think I don't know. It's hard to say a favorite, but it's definitely up it there. It really is, but I still lean towards that Don Filano repo. That seems to be one of my. Are we talking about ease of getting, or are we talking about a repo that is unique and that will always, always bring a talking piece to the? All band? right, tell me what are you talking about? See <laughs> the repo cast. Oh, that Rebel Cast is pretty damn good. We got a new one too. It's right there. We just got that one. The CM Prey Rebel Cast. Okay, is absolutely amazing, and this has to be my favorite Reposado because, like I said, it's a talking piece. No matter yeah. what you put that up against, the sherry in it is just beautiful, oh, and oh. and and the port that comes out of it is beautiful as well again no <laughs> whatever <laughs> bordeaux it's a bordeaux wine barrel. sorry bordeaux <laughs> whatever we'll get there uh, but but it's yeah. different it's beautiful it's limited you know release so for that when we're talking about what brings a repo to life to you that is my repo of all time yeah. if we're going by what can you get every day on the market that is amazing pull it out um yeah I'm, I'm with you with don filano <laughs> yeah in fact I, I had a friend send me a message last night saying you know what do you recommend for a reposado around my nice. box i'm like don filano <laughs> you can't go wrong with that yeah, yeah it, it's great so, since you pulled out your widow jane to put it up against it tell us about that it's it is very subtle in the repo but that tastes very much like the anejo they're really close in flavor i mean you get a lot of that same profile there's i mean one's clearly agave base and one isn't but this is so sweet to, it? it just it's so like even just i haven't even tasted it yet today but this is so sweet and i i uh i you know when we we started out with the the repo where am I even? The, the repo. <laughs> <laughs> we started out with the repo and, and then tasting the repo off of the actual Widow Jane was like, okay, just give me the Widow Jane. Like, uh, you know, personally, I'm good with this. Right? I'll, I'll, opposite. I'll take the repo over the Widow Jane any day. <laughs> Twice on Sunday since today is Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do another episode later because when we could break it up, talk about how it's made, but yeah, no, it's there good. It a little teaser. <laughs> yeah, we got the fish balls. All of our viewers love the fish balls. Oh, no fish are ever harmed while we are using them. 
I found these. I love going to these like um, estate sales or these little um, um, like secondary um, places that sell old antiques and like antiques. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, we just got from a, a local liquor store has a bunch of old glassware that was branded stuff. And we got these these Coralejo blue bottom oh, margarita it. glasses. And picked up like eight oh, of them for wow. eight Ooh. bucks, twelve bucks, something like that. that. And those are Holy crap! Glasses. They're also branded old vintage glasses uh, that we found at a liquor store. <laughs> That's fun. Love that. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> that right? That, okay, that this is our very first Widow Jane ever. Period. This well, very second. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cheers you guys with the uh, the repo. <laughs> uh, you gotta take a taste of this. <laughs> That's beautiful. That is sweet. It's very, very sweet, very sweet. as far as the bourbon yeah. goes. Yeah. But <laughs> wow, that was also let me, let me try that again. I what? feel like that's the sweetness that transferred to the repo. Okay. 91 proof. I that is beautiful. There is, yes, that there is. is a maple syrup component to it. There's a brown sugar component all, all together. It's like a, a maple brown sugar that washes out. You get a beautiful mash, which means this is higher on a malt scale than a than a rye or a barley scale, mm -hmm. um, which I love a more malty whiskey. That is just my thing. So this one is a slight difference than yours. Um, only because it's a special edition with the maple syrup barrels. Oh, oh there is a little more. <laughs> be yours. Okay, sorry about that. That's <laughs> but it's yeah, this good. Is new American oak barrels. Do we have maple syrup though? Right here. Oh, it is. Wait, no, sorry, that's a different. We have a different. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. We don't need to get too confusing. <laughs> but but I can see even with that. I can see really how that transfers even into the Anejo because, right. you know, you're getting the sweetness from the Widow Jane recipe, um, which then transfers into, you know, the agave spirit. Um, and so I definitely see it. Yeah. I I mean, I think that on the Anejo, you know, yes. Oh, it's yeah. Like, it's more... Yeah, that. is more prominent i do think there's there's something there on the nose in the repo where you're getting more of that sweetness hit mm -hmm. for me um but it's still very everything else is more prominent in the onion this is still to me personally i think that the widow jane is actually the widow jane itself is still better than the repo for me and the that's exactly what our, I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> and you guys are like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so one reason I think I tend to really tread a fine line with Aneos is because to me, a lot of Aneos are overly sweet. And that's just not my jam when I'm I'm drinking. You know, I want something pleasant and something that you know, kind of makes the brain always think about what's coming in. Mm -hmm. And I really find that that this repo does that. Um, you know, each sip, you get something different. Each sip has has a different level of complexity where where now we're going from the whiskey to the Anejo. I see that they're very similar. They're just, mm -hmm. for me, sweetness bombs. And it's like, hmm, I get the agave in there. But for me... I'm, I'm with Ryan. I'm on the on the repo train. Yeah. <laughs> this exact lineup, the way it is right here, is kind of the way I would personally rate my favorites. Repo, Añejo, and then the original Añejo, oh. to me, personally. Yeah. Um, but this is pretty dang good. This is, this is neat. <laughs> I know, yeah. But it's not in the same realm. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I agree actually with that lineup uh, because you know at the end of the day with you ranking the the straight añejo as your your favorite yeah uh, to me it's like I agree because 
at the end of the day, as good as the widow Jane Añejo is, we're mm -hmm. talking about tequila. We're talking about agave. So let's, you know, let, let's. <laughs> Brian, Brian, I'm interested to see how would you line up your three. Um, the exact opposite of how you have it. <laughs> so from the the Widow Jane Repo, Widow Jane Anejo, then the regular Anejo. Okay, okay. Devin? Ooh. I think the Repo is going to be in the middle. Um, I like the, the Anejo by Ocho because, as we've already said, it's sweet. It's got some beautiful notes to it. It really reminds you that, you know, Ocho is making it. But then that Repo every day is right there, like challenging you every drink, like what's coming next, what's there. Okay, so you're already going to put the regular, you're going to put the Ocho at the end. Which one is first, the regular Añejo or the Repo Ocho? Yes. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that is the answer, though. Uh, are they the same? <laughs> that is the answer, yes. They're the same. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Break them the same like that. I, I would I would give them both the the you know spotlight because like uh, Morgan said we're talking tequila so when we're talking tequila the agave definitely in the anejo is there but I love the complexity and the differences you get out of that repo without being overly sweet. Okay. Um, and so that's why I would give them both the same spotlight. Just what story are we telling today? Okay. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Well, guys, I want to say thank you very much for coming on with us. I, this is fun. I enjoy this. Maybe we can do something else in the future again. I would really enjoy that. Um, but yeah, anything else you would like to highlight that you got coming up for people to keep an eye out for your channel? And how do they get a hold of you? YouTube, Facebook, Insta? Um, we're, we're on YouTube, but we don't do much with that. Um, definitely Instagram and Facebook, a guy, girl on the trail. Okay. Uh, in terms of things that are coming, we, we've been working with some industry people for a few months now, getting, um, getting basically a, a local, I wouldn't say tequila group, but it's going to be called uh, the Colorado Agave Collective. Oh, and, there you go. That's going to, our, our first event is going to be uh, April 1st, but we're, I mean, you okay. guys are the first people we've really said anything <laughs> publicly to it. You know, this coming week is when it's really going to go the whole world knows. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Teaser. <laughs> yeah, right? It's, it's, oh, it's going to be cool. We got some cool stuff planned for We've it. been trying to put together a cool tasting. Um, it's just like the whole, like, holiday seasons came in. And then it was super hard to sell the uh, the tickets for it at first. Mm -hmm. um, so like we're just kind of waiting for everything to die down. And then we're going to do it up where we can actually put the tickets on sale for at least a month so that people have a time to get there. Sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for coming on. I appreciate it. Always remember to sip, sip savor, and celebrate. <laughs> Salud. Cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs> And bye.